Good morning. Hello. How are you? Matt Barry here on the ESPN College Football YouTube channel. Wishing you a happy Sunday, bloody Sunday. Um, allow your boy a minute to get into the TV behind the curtain. Did the 7 a.m. Sports Center on Saturday, uh, followed by the all day college football tour. And so this morning, so basically yesterday, left the house around 5 a.m., got back to the house at 3 a.m. So if the sentences aren't coherent, if I'm missing words or the grammar is that of a third grader, I apologize. Man, I'm just trying to be upright at this point. Uh, so good morning and what a Saturday it was. Listen, I'll tell you one thing. Anyone who ever says it's a bad week of college football or it's a bad schedule or it's not a good look, never listen to them. Because the one thing this sport does is it brings out storylines that you'd never expect. And Saturday was another example of just how beautiful this sport is. I'm going to get into a couple of things. We're going to keep this one short because I don't think I could physically communicate at a level that would be uh, transcribable between you and I. But the first cheers is to the Colorado Buffaloes and again, Deion Sanders. 28-17 late fourth quarter. They had no business winning that game. None. Zero. And all they did was stay the course. Colorado State had that game won. If they get that first down late, Dion's got to burn all of his timeouts and the game's over and Colorado State wins it. But teams that believe, teams that are tight knit, teams that understand that it's not over till it's over, they end up winning the game. And that is one of the best atmospheres I've seen in a long, long time. And just the, the fact that it's Colorado that has been dormant for decades, they are... Last night watching that game, it was like watching the game with the U. I mean, little Wheezy, little Wayne was bringing them out. The Rock was there. There were so many celebrities and people that wanted to be a part of it. What Dion's done in three weeks is one of the biggest turnarounds in sports history. And listen, I don't know where this thing's going to head. I don't know if they're going to beat Oregon. I don't know if they're going to beat USC. I don't know if they're going to win five or six games. It doesn't matter. Through the first three weeks of this season – you could argue this is one of the most impressive feats in sports history in that someone came in and took a program and a brand that was candidly nothing, and now they're selling out at the bookstore. Now celebrity, the rock is as A-list as it gets. Now he, he's made he's made Colorado something. And that is absolutely remarkable what he's been able to do. The game at first was sloppy. Uh, it was embarrassing how both teams were handling the moment. It got out of hand, but once it settled down, it was one of the games of the year, and that one's going to be hard to beat. And Shador Sanders, I'm telling you, man, what he did late, 92 yards. Now, I was in the studio with Dan Mullen all night, and he was getting furious at the Colorado State defense because he gave – he was basically calling it for the inside football nerds, the Tampa 2, and he said that's the easiest – Defense to throw against it. Shador made it look easy. He just winged it around the yard, 92 yards for the game time score, two point conversion, double overtime. And now Colorado's three and oh. But for had that game end the way that it did and have that team start the season the way that they have, I mean, do, enjoy the ride. Again, I don't know where this thing's headed this year. But I know that we're going to look back on this first three weeks of the season with how they've done it and smile at what this has done for college football. You guys know me well enough by now that I'm I'm very pro college football and what a great sport that it is. And the fact that every single television show at ESPN, other networks, I think I read somewhere that 60 Minutes was there at one point. Like The spotlight is on our sport. And that's a beautiful thing. And so... I didn't think they were going to win. I thought it was over going to Oregon and USC. I'm thinking, well, this great story is going to go from three and O to two and three. Nope. And who are we to not believe that they can go beat Oregon? Travis Hunter's out for a few weeks because of the cheap shot. I don't like that. Uh, but all in all, 
cheers to a ride that I don't think any of us can doubt anymore uh, after a remarkable finish, an entertaining finish to that game. And if you guys aren't watching college football final for that final highlight, come on. We stay till 2.30 a.m. to give you the most comprehensive coverage of a college football Saturday. So give us a watch, will you? Uh, that's cheers one, cheers two. Overall, a day that, you know, I thought the team of the day was probably LSU, uh, co- other than Colorado, conference opener on the road in Starkville, early kickoff, Jaden Daniels, neighbors. Th- I mean, they were awesome. And I still maintain this. I had LSU in the playoff. I look like an idiot after week one. I had LSU as the best team in the SEC West. I look like an idiot after week one. But now, as things start to shake out, Alabama has some serious issues. And we get into that with Paul Feinbaum on the Sunday recap. Texas A&M, what are they after the Miami loss? And now LSU, of all those teams, has come back from stubbing their toe in week one, and they looked absolutely dominant on Saturday. So I'm feeling a little bit good and a little bit better about what I had with LSU at the beginning of the season if Jaden Daniels and that team can continue on this path. And when you look at it as a whole, I mean, the SEC, it's wide open. Georgia had to work to get by South Carolina. 24-14 was the final there. They had to work. Tennessee goes down at the swamp and Billy Napier and Graham Mertz and what they did yesterday at the swamp, that was huge. So Tennessee, a team that we thought was going to step up, they're kind of on the back end now of the SEC East. Alabama's already lost. They had to work to get by South Florida. We've already brought up Texas A&M. And so right now, big picture, I mean, Arkansas lost at home to BYU. Not that they were a legitimate threat to take home the SEC East, West, rather, but this thing's wide open. And so what I've learned over the first few weeks of the season, in terms of who we have is a top four, you could argue that Texas is number one in the country right now. Florida State on the road at Chestnut Hill. I mean, big picture. I think once we turn the calendar towards October, we're going to see a team one, through team eight, nine, and 10 of all having an opportunity to get this thing going because it is wide open in college football in the SEC. Two other things before we get out of here on Sunday, bloody Sunday, we got through a kind of a week non-conference schedule, but next week, look what we have. We have Notre Dame and Ohio state in South bend, Sam Hartman, central Michigan yesterday. They finally have a quarterback, Kyle McCord, Got the start against Ohio's for, for Ohio State. He's the starting quarterback for the rest of the year. They finally blew someone out, hung 63-something, let up 10. That's a matchup to watch. Very pivotal going down the stretch. And then Florida State and Clemson. Like those two teams in an ACC that need something good to have happen. Clemson's rebounded after that week one loss. Florida State escaped Boston College. And so week four. Based on some of the stuff we saw in moving in week three, you've got two monster matchups that I think are going to dictate a large part of the rest of the season. And don't sleep on Ole Miss, Alabama. Because, again, Alabama has a problem at quarterback. Tyler Buckner, he ain't it. Ty Simpson didn't look great. And Jalen Milrow didn't play a snap against South Florida. The offensive line is leaky. Lane can go get that one. Ole Miss looks good. And we're going to learn a lot now that conference play has started of what we have in terms of teams that are legitimate threats, not only to win their division or win their conference, but really position themselves going to, into October as we march on in the college football season. So this was brief. I know there's a lot to talk about. Fine bomb and I get the recap, but the headliner from Saturday, Colorado continues to be the greatest story, not only in college football, but in sports. The SEC, to me, appears to be wide open, and we are setting the table for a week four that could have big picture implications on the rest of this season. So cheers to you. Hope everybody got some sleep. I didn't. Cheers to me for probably having multiple libations and energy drinks throughout the Sunday. Uh, It's the beautiful thing about this sport. I would rather do nothing than be sleep deprived. 
and have a beautiful college football Saturday. So everyone enjoy the rest of their Sunday. Thanks for watching Sunday Bloody Sunday here on the ESPN College Football YouTube channel. Give me something I can